Here's some more about big numbers. I couldn't resist talking more about this because it's so fun. Um, I just one of the things I was thinking about in the span of time since I did the other videos is, uh, you know, one way to think about this, as I've said in pre in a lot of the previous videos, I really think about this as just kind of fun for your inner 12-year-old um, making big numbers. And I thought of a, a little more specific version of that, which is, you know, a game that two 12-year-olds could, could play is just name the biggest number you can possibly name. And it's important that it's not one person names a big number and then the other person has to name something bigger. That's trivial. You just say that plus one or that times two or something like that. You have to do like rock, paper, scissors, do it simultaneously. Um, and you can think of this as giving yourself incredible am ammunition. If somebody else says, oh, uh, uh, Googleplex to the Googleplex power, um, you just say something like F, epsilon, F sub epsilon naught of three. And uh, there's very little probability that the other person, if they don't, haven't seen this kind of stuff, could possibly be close to, to that number. But now we're going to go even further. Okay. Um, for some reason, I was also thinking, picturing 12-year-olds like having uh, Dungeons and Dragons games and saying, oh, I've got F epsilon out of three hit points on my, my character. That would be fun. So what we want to do, um, this, this couple, I'm going to do a couple videos about what's called the Veblen hierarchy of functions. And the, the short version is we're going to apply these ideas of recursion and repetition and diagonalization to create new ordinals. And we're going to put those into the, uh, the subscript slot of our fast growing functions and then create bigger finite numbers with that. Um, and so it's going to be a nice systematic way to create huge ordinals and that's going to create huge finite numbers. Okay, But I need to, to give you some more background first um, on some ordinal stuff. Again, from not from an expert's perspective, but we're just going to do just enough so that we can understand the Veblen stuff. So the first thing is uh, the idea of a fundamental sequence for a limit ordinal. So a limit ordinal is just something that's not a successor. Something is not something else plus one. And so omega is certainly a limit ordinal, omega squared, omega to the omega, epsilon naught, all of these guys. So a fundamental sequence for a, an or a limit ordinal gamma <coughs> is just a strictly increasing sequence whose limit is gamma. And since we're talking about ordinals, we could imagine sequences that are indexed by something other than the integers, but we're always going to just use I integers. And so the, the ordinal notation for that is it's an omega sequence. It's just something that's a regular sequence. Now, we've really been implicitly using these as soon as we started the diagonalization trick uh, with f sub omega. We defined f sub omega of n to be, you take that same input and you, you take that and you, you put in, instead of omega, you put in n. And the reason that makes sense is that as n gets bigger, that's a sequence whose limit is omega. But we could have put in f sub 2n of n or f sub n squared of n. Wouldn't have been as natural, but it, everything we said we could have worked, we would have just gotten somewhat different functions. So I've been sweeping under the rug that there's actually not a unique definition of these fast, this fast-growing hierarchy. It actually depends on having specific fundamental sequences chosen. Luckily for everything we're going to do, there's without up to a little bit of fudging and changing stuff. There's a pretty natural choice in each in each case. Okay, so. The notation is uh, given any ordinal gamma, we don't note its fundamental sequence by gamma brackets n. So the main thing we use about that is that the limit as n goes to infinity, and I'm not going to write the n goes to infinity because that's always what we mean, of gamma brackets n is gamma. And so it's this particular choice of how to sneak up on gamma through smaller ordinals, basically. So the fundamental sequences we've been implicitly using in the previous videos the sequences that sneak up on omega, the simplest one obviously is just the identity sequence, just n. Omega squared, remember that was the, um, the picture with a, a whole quarter plane worth of dots. And we sneak up on it by having one column of dots, that's omega, two columns of dots is omega times two, three columns of dots, etc. So omega times n. In the limit, that goes to omega times omega, which is omega squared. Similarly, for any particular power, omega to the k plus one, if we already think we understand omega to the k, we just multiply that by finite numbers and make the finite numbers get bigger and bigger, and we approach omega to the k plus 1. What about omega to the omega? Well, that's actually, in a way, it's actually simpler. We just say, oh, well, I know how to sneak up on the exponent. Omega, omega brackets n is just n. So I'm going to sneak up on omega to the omega by just saying omega 1, omega to the 2, omega to the 3, omega to the 4, etc. Now, the coolest one we've gotten to so far is epsilon naught. And we'll talk more about why it's called epsilon sub zero, epsilon naught. 
Um, that was defined as the limit of towers of exponentials. We could use the Knuth up arrow notation, um, but or we could just write it out like this. It's just going to be the towers of omegas going off um, bigger and bigger towers, and the limit of that was epsilon naught. And what's special about that is that's beyond anything we could create just with finite numbers and omegas and any kind of uh, regular ordinal arithmetic. So it has a special role. Um, one thing, why n minus 1? So this is n minus 1 copies of omega. Again, that's one of those things that you could actually change if you wanted to. But it makes it so that uh, epsilon naught of 1 is just 1, and epsilon naught of 0 is 0, which, which agrees with the, the first two terms of this guy, which is just kind of nice. Okay, So from now on, we're going to be producing um, a bunch of limit ordinals. It's not hard to produce successor ordinals. You just add one. Limit ordinals are the interesting ones. We're going to produce any new limit ordinal, and we're going to produce it as the limit of a particular fundamental sequence. And then we're going to remember that fundamental sequence when we put that into the fast-growing hierarchy whenever we do a diagonalization step. Okay, so I want to talk more about ordinal arithmetic and sort of where, what, what, where that goes, especially regarding epsilon naught. Um, ordinal exponentiation with base omega. That's where it started getting really cool. Okay. Um, there's a big distinction in terms of calculating omega to a power between successor exponents. Like here, I had like omega to the fifth is defined as a limit of omega to the fourth times n uh, versus or, uh, limit ordinal exponents. So like for example, omega to the omega. Okay, so let's clarify that, and that's going to be a model for what we do with the Veblen stuff later. So if alpha is a successor, if it's just gamma plus 1, so we're taking omega to the gamma plus 1, well, that's just omega to the gamma times omega. That rule of exponents actually is true, even though not all rules are true. Uh, our usual algebra rules are true for ordinal arithmetic. And um, explicitly what that means is, since I've said we want to have the fundamental sequences, Omega to the gamma plus 1, how you sneak up on that is you take omega to the gamma and then you just multiply it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Now, what that, is, what that means is this result, which we already use for finite k to sneak up on omega to the omega, we're actually, that's going to be true no matter how big gamma is, as long as we're just going to the next ordinal. So gamma could be, well, pretty soon we're going to have it be epsilon naught, for example. Okay. Um, now, if alpha is a limit ordinal, we do the same thing that we were doing up here, omega to the alpha brackets n, we just go ahead and sneak up on the exponent through smaller ordinals and then see what the limit of that is. And we're going to define omega to the alpha as just the limit of omega to whatever these guys are, the fundamental sequence for alpha. So that's a very basic principle. I note that here. Um, if you have some function, really a continuous function, and this is basically the definition of continuity almost, um, for a continuous function of alpha, you just apply that function to the fundamental sequence for alpha. Okay, so this is just a stronger version of a continuity principle. Okay, um, so we'd already observed that ordinal exponentiation alone really can only take us so far, um, and let's see, I'm looking at my notes here, um, make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, can only take us so far. It can take us to these arbitrary towers of omegas here, but the limit of that is epsilon naught. And we might think that we're just completely crapped out on uh, ordinal, ex ex ordinal arithmetic at that point, because epsilon naught is to be defined as the thing that's bigger, the supremum of all expressions we can make using ordinal arithmetic, starting with finite numbers and omega. Okay. So for example, if you try to take omega to the epsilon naught to get something bigger, well, that's, this isn't a, a great proof, but this is the idea. It's omega to a tower of, uh, uh, an exponential tower of omegas. Well, that's just the same thing. Um, it's still an exp infinite exponential tower of omegas, so it's still epsilon naught. And you can actually prove that. It's true. Okay. But the thing is, you might think, oh, well, I'm stuck. Epsilon naught is the biggest ordinal. Well, that doesn't make any sense because we can always add 1. Epsilon naught is, is plus 1 is bigger than epsilon naught. And then it turns out we can start the arithmetic again, and it's actually going to be useful. Now, here's a counterintuitive thing. What, we, what I've just said, to combine these two statements, is that if I take epsilon naught and I put it in the exponent with this infinite ordinal as the base, you'd think that's a really good way to make something bigger. It doesn't make it bigger, and in fact, it's smaller than just adding 1 to epsilon naught. That's one of the funky, weird things about epsilon naught. It's a little hard to get used to. Okay, we can do things like epsilon naught to the epsilon naught. That actually does turn out to be 
bigger than epsilon naught. Um, but I want to actually be systematic about this. There's all sorts of random arithmetic we could do, but I want to get pr progressively more and more systematic about this. Okay, so the first fairly systematic thing we're going to do, it's going to take us a little ways, is um, just go from epsilon naught and just do the simplest thing we can do to get bigger and to get out of this trap that omega the epsilon naught is epsilon naught. In other words, that epsilon naught is a fixed point of the function omega to the x. That's an interesting thing that's going to come up again. So we get out of the fixed point trap by adding 1, and then we can actually go ahead and just use omega exponentiation again. So we start out with this, then we take omega to that power, omega to the omega to the power, dot, dot, dot. All interesting, this is a strictly increasing sequence of ordinals, and it's going to be very interesting to take the limit of that guy. So we're going to take the limit, and that's another ordinal that can't be made bigger by omega exponentiation. In other words, a new fixed point of the function omega to the x. And in fact, it's the very next one. I won't prove that, but it's the very next one. And so we call it epsilon 1. So the epsilons, actually, there's a whole bunch of epsilons, and they're exactly all the fixed points of omega exponentiation. And in fact, fixed points come through this whole story. I'm not going to emphasize them too much. You can actually sort of make that the basis of this whole discussion, and then the more explicit formulaic stuff come after. I'm going to focus on the formulas a little bit more, because it's going to be important for actually cranking out cool big numbers. Okay, So the limit of this sequence, or right here, yeah, um, is going to be called epsilon 1. And it is, a, an, again, something that if I try to omega exponentiate that, I don't get anything bigger. Okay, So here's what I was saying. The fixed points of functionals from the ordinals themselves, that's a really big thing that's underlying this whole thing. And you can definitely look that up. Wikipedia has a little bit on it. and um, You can look very elsewhere, too. OK, so now, what if I do the same thing? What if I take epsilon 1 plus 1, and then take omega to that, and omega to that, omega to that, and take the limit? That turns out to be the next epsilon number, the next fixed point of omega to the x. And then I can do it again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can have epsilon 2, epsilon 3, epsilon 4, et cetera. OK. Um, and then uh, I could even have, let's see. Um, I can even have epsilon sub omega, although we're going to actually, before we do that, I'm going to um, sort of switch to another video. So these epsilon numbers are certainly bigger than the epsilon naught, and we could start putting those into our fast-growing hierarchy. But I want to be more systematic even more, even more so um, and get even huger things before we do that. So what, the way I think about this is we're kind of in the situation we were at in the first few videos when we had the Knuth up arrow and the Conway chained arrow notations. We've got sort of somewhat clever, somewhat recursive things we're doing, but we don't have as huge a mechanism as we had for the fast-growing hierarchy. So in the next video, what we're going to see is a systematic recursive use of repetition, meaning functional powers, just doing some operation over and over again, and diagonalization to create huge stuff. And that's going to be the Veblen hierarchy, but I'll break it right now.